In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the five exponent rules, and you should be able to, by the end of this video, work the five questions below. So let's take a look at our first rule and some vocabulary associated with it. Suppose we have three to the second power. What you need to know is that the three is the base, and the two is the exponent. You always know it's the base because it's the lower larger number, and you always know it's the exponent because it's the smaller number to the right of and above the base. So when we add exponents, we add exponents when we multiply two of the same base. So for example, if we multiply x times x, we're going to add the 3 and the 4, giving us x to the 3 plus or x to the seventh. Let's take a look at a more complicated example. Suppose we have 5x squared y z to the third parentheses times 3x to the sixth y to the fourth. Since the two parentheses are next to each other, that means that everything inside this parentheses is going to be multiplied by everything in this set of parentheses. And we're always going to start with our numbers out front, which are called our coefficients. So we're going to start with our 5 and our 3, and we multiply those together. Since they're not the same base, we're just going to go ahead and multiply the numbers. 5 times 3 is 15. Then we're going to go letter by letter. So let's start off with the x squared. So x squared is inside of the first set of parentheses, and we have an x to the sixth in the second set of parentheses. Since it's the same base twice, that means we're going to add the exponents. x to the 2 plus 6. 2 plus 6 is 8, so we get x to the 8th. Once we finish with the x's, we're going to take a look at our y's. So we have y and y to the 4th. If no exponent is written, your exponent is understood to be 1. So it's y to the 1st times y to the 4th, which is going to be y to the 1 plus 4, or y to the 5. We take a look at our last variable, and the last variable we're going to look at is the z. We have z to the third in the first set of parentheses, and no z's in the second set, so we're just going to write z to the third. Our second rule is going to deal with subtracting exponents. When you divide two of the same base, you subtract the exponents. So notice we have m to the sixth and m squared. It's the same base twice. That means we're going to subtract top minus bottom. So it's going to be m to the six minus two. When I say subtract top minus bottom, I mean top exponent minus bottom exponent. So six minus two gives us m to the fourth. Now let's take a look at a slightly more complicated example. Suppose we have two x to the fourth y to the twelfth z over 6x y to the fifth z to the seventh. And we're going to go ahead and subtract our exponents one letter at a time. We'll reduce the 2 and the 6 here in a second. So x to the fourth, x to the first means it's going to be x to the 4 minus 1 or 3. We're going to go ahead and write out the subtraction one step at a time just to emphasize what I'm doing step by step. The next one is y to the 12th and y to the 5th. Again, we're matching up our letters, our, our bases, y and y. It means we're going to subtract 12, our top exponents, minus 5, our bottom exponent. So it's going to be y to the 12 minus 5. Our last base is a z. We have a z in the top and in the bottom. So we're going to get z to the 1, so if there's no exponent written, it's a 1, z to the 1 minus 7. We can go ahead and write down our final answer with this by reducing the 2 and the 6. Since it's not the same base, we go ahead and reduce the numbers. So 2 and 6 reduces to 1 third. x to the 4 minus 1 is x to the third. y to the 12 minus 5 is y to the seventh. z to the 1 minus 7 is z to the negative 6. So when do we multiply exponents? We multiply exponents when we have an exponent inside 
the parentheses and an exponent outside the parentheses, and if there's no addition or subtraction in the parentheses, which there's not. So this is going to give us x to the 3 times 4. I'll use a little dot for the times. So for emphasis, 3 times 4 gives us x to the 12. Again, an exponent outside the parentheses means we multiply the exponent outside the parentheses by the exponent inside the parentheses. Let's take a look at a slightly longer example. Suppose we have 2pq to the third, all to the fourth power. So if we have 2, the exponent is a 1, so 2 to the first exponent, p to the first exponent, q to the third. When we have more than one exponent inside our set of parentheses, we're going to take the exponent outside the parentheses and multiply it by every exponent on the inside. So the 4 is going to go to the 1, the 1, and the 3. Again, the exponent on the outside multiplies only by the exponents on the inside. So it's going to give us 2 to the 1 times 4, which is 2 to the 4th, p to the 1 times 4, or p to the 4th, and q to the 3 times 4, which is q to the 12th. So the next question is, what do you do if you have negative exponents? Not when. And we have a negative exponent. What we're going to do is take the base that has the negative exponent and either move it from the numerator to the denominator, so from top to bottom, or we're going to take the base with the negative exponent and move it from the bottom to the top. When you move the base with a negative exponent, it changes the exponent from a negative to a positive. And let's take a look at an example. So I have 4x to the negative 2, z to the third. I'm going to go one letter and one number at a time. So 4 to the first, the exponent's positive. So the exponent, since it's positive, means the 4 stays on top x to the negative 2. Since that x has a negative exponent, I'm going to move it down to the denominator. So it's going to be x to the positive 2. When you flip a letter from the top to the bottom, it changes the sign or flips the sign of the exponent. x to the negative 2 becomes x to the positive 2. So we're done with the x. Let's take a look at the z z has a positive exponent, so it's going to stay on top. And I'll put a little line through the z so you know it's not a 2. On the bottom, so we're done with all of the letters on top, on the bottom we have the x squared, because that moved down. m to the positive 4 doesn't go anywhere because it is a positive exponent. And we have y to the negative 5. Since that's a negative exponent on the y, the y is going to move from the bottom to the top, and it's going to become y to the positive 5. Let's take a look at a longer example. You might want to pause the video and try to work this one out on your own, and press play when you're ready to see the answer. For this example, we have an 8 and a 12, so I'm going to reduce those here in a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at our letters first. So starting at the top, I have x to the negative 2. Since that's a negative exponent, it's going to move down to the bottom. And that's going to make it x to the positive 2. We're done with the x on top. Now y to the third is a positive exponent, so I'm going to leave it y to the third. Now let's take a look, and we're done with the y. Let's take a look at the bottom, or the denominator. We have a 12, x squared moved down. x to the 11th, since that's a positive exponent, it's going to stay on the bottom. And we have y to the negative fifth. Since the y has a negative exponent, it's going to move to the top, and that negative exponent is going to become a positive exponent. Now that we're done converting all of our negative exponents to positive exponents, we'll see if we can simplify the expression any further. 8 and 12 are both divisible by 4, so that's going to give us 2 over 3. Notice I don't do anything with the exponents because they aren't the same base. Since they're not the same base, I have to go ahead and divide like normal. 
I have y to the third and y to the fifth. Since I'm multiplying two of the same base, I have to add the exponents. 3 plus 5 is 8. On the bottom, I have x squared and x to the eleventh. Since it's two of the same bases being multiplied by each other, I add the exponents, giving us x to the 2 plus 11, or x to the thirteenth. Our last rule has to do with zero exponents. Any base that has a zero exponent is equal to one. And I have an example here to kind of prove to you why that works. Suppose I have 3 squared over 3 squared. Well, our subtraction rule says that's 3 to the 2 minus 2. Because we have two of the same bases, that means we can subtract the exponents. 2 minus 2 is 0, so we have 3 to the 0. I'd also like to show you that 3 squared is 9, and 3 squared is 9. So top I have 9, bottom I have 9, and 9 divided by 9 is 1. So this means that 3 to the 0 power is also equal to 1. What I want you to see from this is that raising any base to a 0 power is the exact same thing as dividing that base by itself, which means it's equal to 1. So again, anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1. Let's take a look at a slightly longer problem. Suppose I have this really big long expression here in parentheses and there's a zero exponent outside the parentheses. You don't actually have to do anything inside the parentheses because it's all being raised to the zero power. The whole thing is going to be equal to one. 